Hi, thanks for tuning in to another Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium and our education department. My name is Matt, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about nudibranchs. Uh, so today we'll be covering the national, the next generation science standards, 3-LS4-3. So when I say nudibranch, I'm actually talking about a bunch of different sea slugs. These sea slugs are broken down into two different groups, and today I'll be focusing on the Aeolid group. But to help explain their name, I'm going to show you a picture of a Dorid. If you look in the back, you can see that their gills are very visible and are sticking out of their body. They're able to pull their gills in and protect it for a moment, but that is why they're called nudibranch. It means naked gills. And if you think about gills, think about sharks. You can see the gill slits, but they're very covered still, where the gills are deep inside that slit where they're breathing. So this is a very important feature of them is that they have those gills out and visible. Uh, with aeolids, they're actually a little bit special. So what I'm going to do is I talk about these different parts of our nudibranch friend. I want you guys at home to follow along and color the part I'm talking about and label it. So I'm going to show you an example right now. So here is the base of my nudibranch. And the first part I'm going to talk about with the aeolid is their serrata. So you can see I colored it nice and purple. It's all these tentacle looking things. The serrata are actually what they're using to breathe instead of gills. So what it does is it creates a lot of area that they can absorb oxygen from the water from. And so that's why they have so many. The other thing that's really special about these serrata is it's part of their defense mechanism. So to protect themselves from predators, they have at the tip of them, these things called nidosacs. And that name comes from some of the food they eat. They eat this group called nidarians but you're probably more familiar with the animals in that group than its name, like jellyfish or coral, which have these defense mechanisms called nematocysts. So they shoot out these little stinging cells to protect themselves from potential predators. These nudibranchs are able to still eat these animals thanks to protective coatings they have. And so they go and eat things like coral, take those stinging cells and are able to put it into the tips of each of these serrata to then use it as their own self-defense mechanism, which I think is pretty cool. It's very weird. It's very wonderful. Now, the other important part of these little nudibranchs is going to be the base body, the mantle. So mantles, when you think about, when you hear mantle, it's very often associated with the cousins of nudibranchs, snails. Or So snails have that hidden inside of their shell, and it's the part that connects them to the shell. In the nudibranch, it is most of the thing that covers their body. It is a special organ. It isn't skin. It's very similar, but it is also very vibrant and colorful in our little nudibranch friends because it is a warning to predators that they are venomous or poisonous, depending on the kind of uh, nudibranch you're looking at. And to help you get a view of how small these guys actually are, I have a picture here showing one on the, someone's fingertip. So these guys are very small, which is why they eat on things like coral and sponges. So the last thing I wanna tell you about, about these nudibranchs is in this picture, you can see that they have googly eyes. That was artist renditioning. renditioning. They don't actually have eyes or eye spots. They might, some species do have things called eye spots. So they are able to detect light using special sensors. But the main way that our nudibranchs get around, and this picture shows it really nice, is their rhinophores. So it's not very visible on our coloring page, but the rhinophore are those antenna gonna be on top of their head. And they're actually kind of like mixing your nose and your tongue. So they're tasting and smelling chemicals in the water to find their way around. And this is the main way nudibranchs actually get around and find their food. Um, the last thing is the bottom of them. Again, my picture doesn't show it very well, is the foot. This is the same as same muscle group as you'll find in snails and other gastropods. All right, and that'll wrap us up for a little taste of nudibranchs and a little bit about their anatomy and what makes them specially adapted for their environments. And for my Georgia locals, we did touch on science standards for third grade life science one. Um, thank you guys again, and tune in for another episode of Deep Sea Learning with Georgia Aquarium. Bye.